Johnson & Johnson topped estimates in its latest quarter, but it could still see job cuts as it battles inflation. We are watching shares there pretty much unchanged, trading pretty flat right now. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani, who's breaking down the numbers for us today. Anjali. That's right, Akiko. As you mentioned, beating on, on earnings and expectations. And to that point of the job cuts, really pointing out the fact that even a company as large as Johnson & Johnson, not immune to the impacts of inflationary uh, uh, impacts there. Uh, we saw specifically uh, growth in some segments, though, specifically uh, the pharma sector uh, of business. And that was uh, on its cancer drug uh Darzala. Uh, that one specifically, uh, you know, an interesting one as the company we know is in that uh, focus of blood cancer, so that multiple myeloma drug. We also saw a little bit of an increase in medical devices. Now, that's a segment that's been under pressure in previous uh, quarters as a result of reduced hospital visits. We've seen how the hospital sector uh, has uh, been uh, impacted, and so that has impacted Johnson & Johnson as well well. And so what we've seen is a change in that this quarter, uh, possibly uh, looking to slowly bring that back, depending on how hospital visits uh, turn out. Also want to point out that the company, you know, those job cuts, that announcement really coming as the company is, quote, right sizing as it splits into two, uh, that new Kenview brand that's going to house all the consumer products we know well, like Tylenol, Band-Aid and the like, uh, that is set to spin out officially late next Next year, and that's still on track, according to everything we heard on today's earnings call. So, looking at uh, the total business, as you mentioned, trading flat, but but still growing slowly, as uh, Johnson Johnson tends to do. So, that's where things stand right now for the company. And Anjali, meanwhile, uh, you know, we're in October. We have certainly heard from plenty of health officials within the Biden administration warning about these new COVID variants that they expect to really tick up going into the winter. What do we know about how different this is and just how much immunity we're likely to have with the current boosters on the market? So what they're expecting is that we will have some protection from these boosters. Now, when it comes to individuals who are highly vulnerable, like immunocompromised folks, they're looking at the monoclonal antibodies and the reduced efficacy of that um, and the sort of limited protection we have in terms of treatments, which is why the administration has been so bullish on pushing for these vaccines and the need for a majority of Americans to get vaccinated. We heard from White House COVID-19 uh, response team coordinator, Dr. Ashish Jaya, yesterday talking about just that and what sort of the tools are as the administration has continued to say we have in the books. Listen. Right now, we do have widespread availability of these brand new uh, bivalent vac vaccines that are free, widely available. Pretty much everybody's eligible for it. We have treatments. We have lots of testing capability. In that context, Yes, I mean, obviously uh, we're looking at the flu, we're looking at and worried about uh, we might see with COVID or RSV, but I don't think we're gonna need to do anything that resembles what we had to do in, in previous winters. Um, I really do think we're in a very, very different place. So, so as you can hear, um, you know, I, I asked specifically about mo moving back to stronger mitigation measures like indoor masking. Um, and it seems like the administration is still convinced that we don't necessarily need to do that as long as uh, we get boosters and are, you know, staying pretty cautious and vigilant. So that's where things stand right now. OK, a reminder for everybody to schedule that booster ahead of the winter. Thanks so much for that, Anjali.